everyone. Today we are continuing our series of Lenten devotions on the topic of brokenness. Last time we talked about how all kinds of things can be broken when they no longer function to fulfill the purpose for which they were designed. For example, uh, I have this, uh, this lovely mermaid that my daughter made at an art camp um, a number of years ago. And, uh, you know, and, and she's broken, you know, she probably just needs some super glue to put her back together, but it's been in my desk drawer for a number of years and I still haven't remembered to fix it. So, you know, it's still beautiful and it brings back some great memories of uh, when my daughter was a little girl. Um, but it's broken. It no longer looks the way it was supposed to. We talked also about how people can be broken. In fact, all of humanity is broken because of the choice we made in the very beginning in the book of Genesis to go our own way instead of following God's plan for us. Despite this deadly choice that we made, God is not willing to give up on us. He's not just going to leave us forgotten in some desk drawer. He's not going to toss us away like a broken toy. Throughout history, he has been working out his plan to save us, to restore us, to heal us, so we can live in the way that he designed us to live. Part of that plan was his relationship with the chosen people, the Israelites, as depicted in the Old Testament. This started all the way back in Genesis with the story of Abraham, when God promised that Abraham's descendants would be as numerous as the stars of the sky and that he would give them the land of Canaan to live in. He continues to guide and protect his chosen people right through the line of Abraham and then Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, all the way to Moses, who leads the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. We know that God created and loves all humanity. So why did he single out the people of Israel in a special way like this? Well, the people of Israel were supposed to be his vessel, his vehicle of salvation to the rest of the world. Through their obedience to the Lord, they were supposed to exemplify who God was to the world around them. They were designed as a sort of canvas on which God would illustrate his power and love to point all humanity back to him so that he could restore the world to his original plan. In Leviticus 26, he tells them, I will put my dwelling place among you. I will walk among you and be your God and you will be my people. The Israelites carried the Ark of the Covenant with them throughout their wanderings as a visible reminder that God was with them, that he had made a covenant with them. Later, a more permanent dwelling place for God was created in the temple at Jerusalem, built by King Solomon. Solomon's father, King David, was called a man after God's own heart. King David genuinely loved the Lord and did all he could to live out God's plan for him and for his people. Unfortunately, King David's descendants were not as mindful of their covenant with the Lord. They did not live out their purpose of demonstrating who God was to the people around them. Instead, they became exactly like the people around them. They built altars to other gods even within the temple itself. They committed all kinds of terrible offenses, even sometimes murdering family members when their reign was threatened. Under such leaders, the chosen people had become unrecognizable, as it says in Isaiah chapter 1, Woe to the sinful nation, a people whose guilt is great. They have forsaken the Lord, they have spurned the Holy One of Israel, and turned their backs on him. In fact, their disobedience to God was so severe 
that the book of Ezekiel tells us that God withdrew his own presence from their temple. Because of their own choices, the people of Israel no longer functioned in the way God had planned. The vehicle had broken down, the canvas was cracked, the vessel to show God's salvation was broken, much like this poor mermaid that I showed you earlier. Even so, God still had a plan to use his chosen people as a vessel for salvation. Numbers 24, 17 predicts that a star will come out of Jacob, a scepter will rise out of Israel. In 2 Samuel 7, the prophet Nathan tells King David, when your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. This, of course, we understand to be a prediction about the coming of Jesus Christ, who would be born of the ancient line of the Israelite people, descended from Abraham, from Isaac, and Jacob. In the book of Luke, when Jesus' birth is predicted, he is called a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. In this way, God's ultimate plan to save the world through the lineage of his chosen people would be fulfilled. What does this mean for us? It means that no matter what bad choices you and I make or have made, God will still use you and me as a vehicle, a canvas, to show his power and love. He has chosen each and every one of us for a specific purpose, as he did the people of Israel. No matter how far we stray from that purpose, he will find a way to bring it back full circle. Let us pray. Lord, Creator, Father, Mother, God, thank you for choosing us. We praise you that no matter how broken we are, you still find a way to fulfill your plan for us. Give us the grace to trust that purpose and those plans. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Have a great day, everybody.